So you graduated in 06, and then uh, what was your forced uh, foray into college? Where did you go? I went to Kilgore College. Okay. But it was a, it was a rocky road even going there because like um, I was kind of overlooked. Well, it wasn't kind, I was overlooked. You know, um, when I was graduating. So I was graduating. I didn't have a scholarship anywhere. And so I was getting ready to go into uh, 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 the courier program, carrier program. It's an air conditioning company here in uh, Antala, Texas. And so I was, you know, I had gave up on the sport. I was like, okay, well, I didn't get a scholarship. Don't know what to do. So I'm just going to go get a job because a lot of my buddies had done the same thing. Right. And so my mom, um, you know, there was a couple guys. There was seven of, uh, of the guys um, committed to Kilgore from my graduating class. So it was a lot of them. So a couple of them double committed to D Division One schools, and I had to go to Kilgore to graduate first and get their associate degree and then go. So my mom was like, "Man, it's a whole bunch of you guys going up there. Them guys going up there. Won't you just go up there and see if you know you can walk on to the team?" And I'm like, "Okay, you know, it was worth a shot, right?" And so I go up there. I ride up there with those guys. I introduce myself. I, you know, do what my mom taught me. You know, my uncles they always tell you when you look a man in the eye, shake his hand. And uh, you know, respect things. So I did that. Asked him could I uh, walk on, and he said, "Well, sorry, son. We already have all our walk-ons." And um, I said, "Okay, thank you, sir." And I got ready to walk off. As I turned to walk away, he's like, "Hey, Shaq." And I said, "Yes, sir." He said, um, "Tell you what. Since you came all this way, uh, go ahead and work out with the guys today. Lift weights with them, and we'll do conditioning, and then we'll we'll talk afterwards." So I was like, okay, cool, I can do that. You thank you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, all I needed was an opportunity, and he, and he gave it to me right when I thought that it was it was over. I, like, I just made this trip for nothing. So I go in there, and like those guys, they're in there just simple little workout. I'm in there like, hey, this is my life. Like, if, if I don't, you know what I'm saying, impress this guy today, um, I'm not going to college. And so I went in there and I lifted, and I was always strong, lower body, and so power clean and squat was always my strength. And so we went in there and we happened to do power clean and squat that day. And uh, I impressed him because I was lifting with the linemen were lifting. And so that happened and he was like, I can tell he was, you know, kind of like, okay, kid might be, be all right. And so we go out to the field and we run in sprints, conditioning. In my head, like, I'm finna kill everybody here. Right. Like, you know, like, and that, and that was like my, my gift. I just plumb out felt like nobody could outwork me. And so I got on the line and I took every every rep we did personal. We was running gassers and I took every one personal. So I came off the line, killing the game. I'm talking about like beating people by like 15 yards. And these guys are starters. You know, they're, they're here starting receiver, starting DB and coaches talking, oh, y'all gonna let Shaq come in here and, and take y'all spot? Like he ain't even on the team and he's like outworking everybody. And he's trying to stir those guys up. And it didn't matter to me. I'm like, I don't care what they do. I'm not letting anybody win one. Right. Right, so, and I can hear them, you know, whispering amongst each other, you know, they bent over. You know, where I come from at John Tyler, we couldn't bend over. If one person bent over, we start over from one. And so the culture was different from where right, I came right, from. Right. And so they bending over, they're talking, he's like, he don't he don't know how many we got, <laughs> right? They like, you know, like, hey, we trying to save some, he ain't gonna have nothing left. And I, I hear him talking, but I'm just like, there's no way nobody's beating me, I don't, I don't care. Like, I have another gear. And literally we ran 15 gases and I didn't lose one. After the team, uh, after after we got done, coach put me to the side. He said, uh, "Okay, son, you can walk on." So he didn't have a spot. He made a spot for me, and I, I'm gonna be forever grateful for Coach Reeves for taking a chance on me um, and letting me walk on that day. Okay. Wow! That, uh, shout out to him. Yeah. If, if you wouldn't have had that opportunity, then absolutely. Um, now, did you do your full two years at Kilgore College? I did. I did. Um, can I, you know, kind of took a little um, chance. I mean, I, I, I walked on, I took the starting spot at cornerback, so I walked on as a corner. Okay. Took the starting spot at corner, and then ended up going head to head with a tight end. He had an out route we were in cover two. Uh, in cover two, you know, cornerbacks have flats. So six foot six tight end, you know, 260 pounds. I was about 177 pounds soaking wet, <laughs> right? So, and I'm coming with everything I got. That's just the only thing I know. So I come and I'm boom, I get big lick on him. And I mean, he let the ball go and everything. Everybody's like hype, oh, jumping yeah, all over yeah. me. And <laughs> literally my arm is like this, right? My shoulder tore, torn the ligaments in my uh, my rotator cuff. And like, I'm in excruciating pain. Everybody's jumping on me, you know, trying to congratulate me. And I'm literally like, I can't feel my arm, right? And so right then, 
I had worked my way onto the team, took the starting spot, and then boom, you know, sudden change, right? You know, it, it, adversity, adversity, right? It, it, absolutely, it was adversity, and so um, set out the rest of the rest of the season. That was before the season even started. So I ended up having a red shirt. <laughs> You know, the year that I felt like I was, you know, gonna be my big year, right. which is my, my first year. So I redshirted, and then we got ready to later in the season. Like I had been sitting, I hadn't practiced nothing, so I got bored. I was like, Coach, you know, let me get my pads back. You know, I just want to practice. He was like, Son, your shoulder's torn. Like you gonna have surgery at the end of the season. Like it's gonna hurt. And I was like, Coach, I'm just bored, right? I just want, I just want to play. So he's like, okay, it's on you. You have surgery either way. You, you either you're gonna mess it up more, and they got to repair it all. He said, either way, they'll fix it. I was like, okay, cool. So I got my shoulders pads back, helmet. I'm going out there. I'm practicing. I'm just like, man, I just gotta stay out of big, big hits, right? Right. A couple times it happened, you know, arm down, whatever, pain. Let it go by. Wait 10, 15 seconds, and I'm good to go, right? And so we was getting ready to play a big time quarterback, and um, never forget, like he was one of the top guys in the country, and he was just shredding people. And so, uh, coach was like, I need somebody to play scout team and be the quarterback. Our defense was really good. We had a lot of division one talent on our defense, so nobody really wanted to do it. So I was like, coach, I'll do it. He's like, you can't do it, you got a torn shoulder. I was like, coach, I can do it. And so he lets me play quarterback, and this he guy runs a lot of zone read. And so they had a scheme to where the defensive end takes the quarterback, I mean, the, the running back, and the linebacker scrapes for the quarterback. So it leaves me one-on-one -on -one if I pull it. So I ended up, long story short, I ended up scoring like seven times on the starting defense, like in a row. And coach got livid, he's pissed. So he kicked the whole team off the field and uh, made us go eat dinner and come back. And so all the rest of the guys, they was like, you know, Shaq, come on, hey, when we come back, they chill out. I was like, all right, cool. So coach calls me into the office and he's like, hey, if you take it easy on us, we're gonna lose on Saturday and we're not gonna make it to the playoffs. So if you do, do a good job out there, I'll take you out to eat. You're talking to a poor kid, you know, I'm raised by a single mom. I right. out to eat, cool, I'm I'm with it. Right, so right, I right, kill right, him right. again. <laughs> so I go out there, I score eight touchdowns again. Defense couldn't stop me. Coach kicked the defense off the field. He said offense gonna have to practice for the rest of the day because if we're gonna win, we have to score 77 points. We can't stop anybody. Yeah. Saturday. And this is in, and this is in practice. This is in practice. Where, and you have a, and you didn't have your surgery yet. No, I haven't had my surgery yet. So I'm doing this all with a torn shoulder. And um, so uh, come Saturday, they played the team and ended up shutting the kid down. They beat them seven to six. They, they, they scored two field goals and the kid didn't get in the end zone. And so, because they had been playing against me the whole the whole week, right. and it turns out I was a little bit more elusive than the kid. So um, had my surgery and then next year came and a coach retired because his wife had got cancer. And um, you know, he was like, I gotta spend more time with my wife and blessing in the skies because then they offered him the athletic director position. So he ended up staying in a, in a bigger role. Right. So he was in charge of hiring the next coaching staff. Next coaching staff comes in and he tells him, hey, if you wanna win football games, you need to put Cornelius Shackford at running back. And he's like, well, he's on my board as a starting corner. He's like, yeah, but if you wanna win football games, you need to put him at running back. Right. And so, um, they moved my position, and you know I was a little upset about it, but you know not not too much. I'm like, you know, coach, I just want to play football, right? I I don't want to move to be on the bench if I'm starting. And he's like, you think I'll move my best corner to running back and not starting? He said, I'm just gonna stay that. He said, I'm not promising you anything, but I said, you ain't got to promise me anything because I feel like I'm outwork everybody anyway. Okay. So um, long story short, that next season I'm leading the nation in, in rushing after like the third game of the season, and like I'm you talking about like. I didn't even know what that stuff meant. Right. My offensive line coach pulled me to the side and he was like, it was getting ready for a game, uh, getting ready for our pregame meal. And he pulled up you know, on his phone. He was like, what's going on, Mr. Number one running back in the nation? And I'm hitting my hip. I was like, what? What'd you say? He's like, you're the number one running back in the nation right now. You're leading on all, all across the country. And I was just like blown away. I was like, man, I got to call my mom. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, cause like it was, it was big to me. Cause like just a year prior, I was finna go work at Carrier. I didn't have any scholarships. I didn't have nobody that was even willing to take a look at me. And, and it's good to have a little moxie with that, cause you, you had like a little chip on your shoulder, and you went from one position to not knowing, and then your head coach. Had his own adversity, right. and he got blessed as athletic director. So it was kind of like the 
silver lining a little bit. Right. Um, so that was your second year at Kilgore. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Kilgore College is only a two-year institution. Absolutely. And did you take your talents to another uh, school? Well, I was going to. That was the plan. But um, my mom ended up getting really sick. 